Hello everyone, Karen Glasser here and welcome to The Peak Stage, a show about wonderful personal stories, inspiration, and the never-ending pursuit of what's next. The Peak Stage is brought to you by Vitalsea, the guide to living in this stage of growth, purpose, and discovery. With guests from all walks of life, join us as we learn, share their inspiring stories of reinvention, resilience, and perspective. Likewise, our stories are still being written. With one thing we know for sure, we are not done yet. Today, we are welcoming Michelle Gabriel to the stage. Michelle, founder and CEO of Story by Design, has been called one of the most effective storytellers in the world. I, for one, would agree with that, and we'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Her 40-year journey has led her from elementary school classrooms and children's hospitals into corporate boardrooms and conference halls, fundraising galas, and even into Soviet television. Telling favorite stories of American children along with Russian fairy tales to 50 million viewers, she promoted intercultural understanding near the end of the Cold War, earning the nickname Russia's American Fairy Godmother. Welcome to the show, Michelle. <laughs> Thank oh. you, Karen. Oh my gosh, what a title is that? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty special, I have to say. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I literally have no words. I'm not even sure how to even answer or respond to that because that's very cool. That's very yeah. cool to be there during that time and to make such a difference in the lives of so many people. Mm -hmm. This show is all about reinvention. And so I'd like to start our, our show today by asking you a question about the moments in your past that has helped to form who you are today? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And let me see if I can go back in time and, and, and answer that one. There were several moments, I think, for me. Uh, one, I, I'm a third generation Alaskan. So growing up in Alaska, I used to look at the mountains. And I think there's a certain strength that comes from that and shapes mm -hmm. you in, in the growing up years. But honestly, couple things. I worked, when I graduated from college, I had a speech and drama major, but I ended up working in social work. And I was working with some foster children. And I had a little girl that had opened up one day about what had happened to her. She had been, she'd been abused. Mm. And when she shared that story, Karen, first of all, she said, I don't know if I can share it with you, Michelle, because maybe you won't love me anymore. She was about a, a, a tragic family background. Yeah. And I said, there is nothing you could ever say to me that would cause me not to love you. And so she opened up, she shared that, broke down. But as a result of that, she, I could see a freeing in her because she wasn't holding that to her chest. Right, right. And I was able to start to get some help for her that she desperately needed. And in that moment, I realized something about the healing power of story, that if we are free to say that which is in us, that it actually frees us to be who we were always meant to be. So that was a defining moment. Another one came when I was working as a children's librarian without training, but hired to because of my background and in uh, and, and speech and drama. Yeah. And the first time I did a story hour, for a group of special ed children in the, the West Side Branch Library of the Grand Rapids Public Library. Love it. And, uh, I, and I, these children were some glazed over faces. And But I started to share a book. I was reading books in those days, not just telling story. And as I'm turning the pages of the book, the name of the story was The Duchess Bakes a Cake by Virginia Call. And the Duchess puts wants to make a cake for the Duke. She puts in too much yeast. She doesn't know how much she's doing. And she ends up, the cake comes out of the oven, across the room, and through the window, and out into the sky. And everybody's got to figure out how to bring her down. As I'm doing, share, turning the pages of this story, I'm watching the kids' faces. Mm -hmm. And I saw the wonder come before their eyes. And I was awestruck. <laughs> and I'd always loved stories growing up, but I'd never seen the impact until that moment. And I remembered thinking, I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life in one wow. form or another. Wow. Well, we have a mutual friend, Diana Wentworth, and she introduced me to you. And I totally understand what you're saying, because when I first uh, was uh, able to watch a video, a show of that you did, I, I was, I literally laughed to myself afterwards because you were telling a story about 
your jobs and all the things that you had done. And yet I was totally enthralled, but you had to- turned the entire thing into a story that kept us going and going. And that is the power of storytelling. And you are so, so, so good at it. And I literally said, okay, I, I need to have Michelle on the show because what uh-huh. she does is so, so powerful. So what about now? I mean, are, are you continuing to reinvent yourself? Always, <laughs> always, 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 because I, 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 because th- that's the joy of living, isn't it? It, right. it is about saying, okay, what's next? And right. I'm 76 now. So, you know, I'm in that third chapter, which is a very important one, because I right. think in this third chapter, we really get to get clarity, develop clarity around what really matters to us. And just right. recently I was making a list of all the moments in my life that brought me the greatest joy. Wow. And I made this, and it was went on for pages and pages. <laughs> but then I said to myself, of all of these things, which were the things that were the most joyful, that where my heart was so expanded, where I felt that I was adding the greatest value. Wow. And I identified what those things were. And I said, okay going forward, this is what I want to be doing. And and I, I really believe, and I've heard you talk about this on, on your shows around the gift of COVID, you know, how yeah. this time of reflection and going inward and being somewhat isolated, I think is bringing us home to self. And I know for me, it's really about you want every day to count. There's a great line I love. It's called, it's from, it's, I don't even know where who it's from, actually, now that I think about it. But people say, people say today is a good day to fly and a good day to die. Okay, it's interesting. When I have days like that where I feel like the gifts I've been blessed with have been fully used, I know that for me, that's a good day to fly and a good day to die. Wow. And so I want more days like that. And that's why I'm crafting this next chapter and the people I'm working with and how I can be of service are all related to those things that bring my heart the greatest joy. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What a great, great statement. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to write that down and um, it really, what a great yeah. statement. Um, yeah. Let's talk a little bit about young storytellers for peace, us yes. and USSR exchange program. Yes. What was that? <laughs> well, it was it was an experience. It was an extraordinary chapter of my life. I I woke up from a dream that said I was to go to Russia. And I had remembered a group that was planning to go. I'd heard something a few months prior, mm-hmm. hadn't given it much thought, but I always believe in listening to dreams. Right. And so I called the person that was organizing this trip. It was in 1984. And his name was Dana Perry. He created something called the Earth Stewards Network. He said, Michelle, do you have a passport? I said, yes, I do. He said, but getting a visa is going to be a little challenging. Then he also said to me, and oh, by the way, this is a citizen diplomacy group. We're there to create connections. We're there to do what our governments haven't been able to do. So he said, you need to get the community involved. So I said, okay, I have three weeks. Okay. So I was doing a a performing at a young authors conference that Saturday and I talked to the administrator and I, the, and he said, well, how about if I put principals in a room and you tell them about this and invite them to participate? That's what I did. Mm -hmm. Three weeks later, Karen, I was, I had 2000 letters from children Wow. for children in Russia saying how much they wanted peace. I was carrying pieces of art. There was hardly any room for my clothing (laughs) because I had so much stuff. So I get to the Soviet Union, of course, seeing that flag unfurled, that hammer and sickle. And growing up in Alaska, we were going into bomb shelters every time the sirens went off just in case. And I remembered feeling my throat constricting and then reminding myself, but I'm here to create connections. And so we we uh, we off we went, and we were we were we were going off into streets and and you know making meeting people and doing all sorts of stuff. 
during that time, which was very uh, much unheard of. In fact, we had to be a little careful. Our tour guide, half of us would stay with her. The rest of us would go off somewhere uh, because we didn't want her to get into trouble because right. the KGB, KGB were always uh, following us. But I had an opportunity to tell stories in an English-speaking school in Moscow. Wow. Uh, the, the children actually ushered us into a room that the, 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 the school um, director did. And we saw Cinderella performed by a group of Russian children. Wow. And in English, of course, at, at its English-speaking school. And we just sobbed. We sobbed. Because these were children, these were like our children, and here they were. And then afterward, the, the, the one of the people in our group said, "Well, you know, we have a storyteller with us, and and would you like for her to tell stories?" And she said, "Absolutely." And so I told Russian fairy tales, which I knew they would be familiar with, so they could follow it easily in English, wow. and then several other stories that were favorites of American children. And afterward, the kids came up to me. And they said, Michelle Gabriel, they said, if you come back to the Soviet Union, would you bring more stories inside of your head? Oh and would you bring children to help tell them? And I said, yes. Sure. <laughs> and I was like, I thought later, oh, what did I do? I didn't have an I didn't have a nonprofit organization. I didn't have, you know, the connections, but I'd made a promise. Right. So I just started telling myself a story of what it would look like if children from the United States were to train as storytellers and sit as diplomats and go there for the purpose of sharing stories that that embodied our mutual values. Fascinating. And 135 kids applied. This is all volunteer, by the way. Wow. And 27 were chosen between the ages of 10 and 15. And off we went to Russia. and. The children, it's 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 like uh, an interpreter said to me, you know, Michelle, if if our children, yours and ours, were dressed exactly the same, we would know which ones were the Americans. I said, how is that? He said, because he said of their eyes, wow. there's a freedom in their eyes. He said, your children have wings, and I said to him, yes, and your children have roots. And we can learn from each other. And many of those children, Karen, have even to this day, and some are in their late 40s and 50s, my young storytellers have maintained relationships, been in each other's weddings. Right. Public television did a documentary film. It's still out on the web. What oh, an impact. What it an was impact. an impact. It was an impact. And it changed us and it changed them. them. You know, because of your visibility um, in the country, you were asked mm -hmm. by the Soviet radio and television to create their official Goodwill Games welcome video when the games yeah. came to Seattle in 1990. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. was that like? I mean, that, that's that's pretty incredible. What an amazing honor and what an amazing opportunity. What was that like for you? It was it was amazing. I felt so honored. Because of course, when you when you share deeply with people, you carry their footprint in your heart. So, right. so to be asked to do that was was a tremendous honor, and I was so so happy to do so to be able to welcome them to my my home state and and to that those all important games because they were it was really again efforts on the part of people to bring people together in a place where they could truly communicate. And, and and you weren't just effective, obviously, in Russia. You mm. you were you were very active and very effective here. In fact, you're a Parents Choice Award winning storyteller, and you're contributing author to the Chicken Soup to inspire the Body and Soul series, the Healing Heart, the author of Using Children's Literature, Storytelling, Writing, Drama, and Art to Enhance Your Classroom Program. So you have totally immersed yourself in this field and um, have just done great good and and great. Um, work in this world of, of storytelling and children and everything. And I was saying to you earlier, I was, you know, I'm a children's rock and roll singer from way, way back. I guess not anymore. I'm not doing it anymore. But 
a Parents' Choice Award. That was like the the be all to end all to get one of those. And congratulations Thank on that. You. I mean, obviously, Thank all you. these other things that you have done are probably even more impressive. But for for children and for people that are in that field, really, that that's quite an honor. You're also. Um, I mean, let's just say it, you are a recipient of the most inspiring speaker award in 2021 this year from the prestigious Inside Edge Foundation for Education. Congratulations on that. Mm-hmm. And you are serving your third year on the board of directors of the Amigos of Costa Rica because you're mm-hmm. in Costa Rica now. Yes. Yes, I am. Wow. I am. <laughs> How did that happen? How did you get there? <laughs> well, Karen, you know, I... Um, I always had on my bucket list that I wanted the experience of living in another culture. You know, I've traveled extensively, of course, the former Soviet Union nine times, places like Iraq, Baghdad and Basra, and Uganda and Central America, but I hadn't lived anywhere else. And so it was on the list. <laughs> and uh, and I went. I came here and three days in, I saw I had my own under the Tuscan sun experience. Uh, with a rental home uh, in in the in the mountains of Aradia, and I just signed a lease. And that was <laughs> and it. To me, what if you don't like it? I said, because I had to ship all my things down. Of course, I have to be surrounded by the things I love. Right. And I said, well, then I'll just make another decision. Right. Because honestly, life is not about getting it perfect. I've learning. I've learned this. It's been a hard lesson, but I've learned mm-hmm. it. It is about saying it's a great experiment. Right. And this is the next step, and the next one will follow and it reveal itself in time. Right. And that's what this yeah. show is all about, where you've continued yeah. to reinvent yourself over and over again. Yeah. You know, the second part of what we talk about is resilience. So mm-hmm. have there been challenges that you have overcome in your life to reach this point? And yeah. how has it changed you and your perspective on life? Uh, you know, yes. <laughs> I would say that for me, Karen, the, the, I was raised in a single parent family and there was much toxicity in the household. Mm -hmm. And I became my mother's mother at a very young age and went through some very trying times. And in fact, I was very happy because my mother and I were able to create an extraordinary peace between us about three weeks prior to her leaving here. And, and, uh, and, and do a lot of healing. And, and I could say, honestly, that my mother was my greatest teacher and my soul connection. And I can see the wisdom. I remember she apologized to me at one point for having leaned on me so heavily. And I said, you know, mama, I would not be the woman I am today. Because of that. Uh, mm -hmm. Because of people opening up and sharing with me. And, you know, the last 24 years, I've been working with adults, helping them to tell their own stories and mine their backgrounds for their wisdom and to be able to reveal that for the purpose of creating connection and transparency and authenticity. and, And I don't think I would have had grown men crying in my presence there've been a lot of men I've worked with if, if they didn't feel um, safe. And, and I know for certain that everything that I've dealt with in my life, the changes the you know, I went through a divorce. I mean, all sorts of different things. Right. Right. They have all contributed so deeply to my ability. I think to listen be, behind underneath the words that are being spoken. And I, I- that's that really important. Yeah, yeah, that is so important. Yeah. So you literally hear the words behind the words. Yes, I do. I do. I do. And when I'm working with people on their own stories, often because we're in our own life, we don't see how how courageous we are or how how resilient we are to use your word or we don't we do, because we're in our lives. Right. But if another human being is deeply listening right. to us, and can reflect back to us what they hear. Right. Right. And 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 tell our story back to us in part. Mm-hmm. It's like, whoa, is that me? Yeah. Yeah. Did you I know? say that? Did I make that impact? Did I actually do that? Okay. You know, 
one of the things that we do here at the peak stage is rather than focusing on the topics that keep us up at night, which there are plenty, I talk about the little itty bitty, you know, committee in my head talking all night long. We would rather focus on those things that get us up in the morning that we are passionate about, that we can't wait to jump out of bed for. So what are those things right now that you are absolutely passionate about? What's next for you, Michelle? <laughs> well, as I said, I made the list. <laughs> and I'm in the process, actually, of crafting my next story. And I, the way I do that is that I identify what are those moments, as I mentioned, and then I start telling myself out loud what that story is. Oh. And what does my life look like? And it includes, obviously, it includes dear friends, which is so important. It includes my animals. I have a, a shelter dog and, and a shelter cat and then a designer cat. And I right. have, and I love to travel. I love culture. I love steeping myself. But I, but I, but I also just love being present in the moment. Right. And just yesterday I was at, I work out five days a week at this mobility gym and a young woman who works there now uh, had all these tattoos on her. And, mm -hmm. and, I, and I said, can you tell me about those tattoos? Karen, she's telling me this story about her father who was murdered and her mother that died just two years ago. And she has an image of her mother on her back, pregnant wow. with herself and her brother. Then she has, and then she has her father, the warrior and oh this temple. And she's, I miss her crying. And I, I left there, Karen. And I felt so blessed that this young woman could trust, share himself with me. Trust, trust you. Karen, those are the things that get me up in the morning. The privilege of being with human beings and hearing the deeper stories. So is that where this is all coming from? Your new program that's going to be happening in 2022? So great, <laughs> great segue. Great segue. Yes, Tell yes, us about yes, what's yes, happening. And yes. I, I know that Diana, our That's right. Family, that's right. right. And, and Diana and I go way back because my second trip to the Soviet Union was with a 80 person delegation uh, wow. and Diana and her husband, Paul, were on that trip. So that's really where we first connected. And then we've reconnected in the last few years. I was a speaker at the Inside Edge way back in 99. But when Diana and I began working together as I was working on my book, which is a whole new area for me to be working on a memoir right. and ask for her support, um, we began to talk about what it would look like if we were to create a retreat for, on story writing and storytelling. Right. And so that's exactly what we're doing. That's coming up in September, the 25th through the 30th, here in Costa Rica at what I believe is one of the most extraordinary retreat institutes on the planet. Uh, it is 22 acres of property that is in Dominical. It's 10 minutes from the ocean but up the mountain in the jungle with the sloths here and there. I've been there. I know what you're talking about. It's my favorite place in the world. It's, it's gorgeous. And, and the, this ground has been, land has been blessed by the Bribri and other tribes here in Costa Rica. Wow. And we are the only group on the campus. They only do one retreat at a time. So you have complete access to the waterfalls and the paths and the That's Balinese heavy. houses that are 200 years old and all of these other spaces to find and connect with yourself. So it's called Soul Stories, Illuminating Your Wisdom wow. Through Storytelling and Story Writing. Then I'm also starting in March uh, online classes, which I've been preparing for. This has been an adjustment for me. I'm used to being live. So that's okay. coming up as well. And then, Will of course, check I'm those out on your website. Pardon me? Will they be able to check these classes out? They will. They will. They will. And of course, the one on one coaching for leaders, entrepreneurs that are really wanting my support in helping them to clarify their messaging and their stories, whether it's to share with a team or a masterclass online or a, a TEDx stage or something else. So that's also what I do. I am inspired by you. And I think that anyone that is listening at whatever time you're listening, whether it's, it's today or tomorrow or a year from now, yeah. You are inspirational. What you are telling us is, is that we can do anything we want to do and mm -hmm. we can keep doing it for as long as we want to do it. And if we want to get on a plane and go to Costa Rica, 
we can do that too. And I really encourage people to go check this out. Uh, the, the, we're putting the link here. It's the Emola Institute.com forward slash retreat forward slash soul dash stories. Check that out. You'll get more information about it because you might want to go join. I'm thinking you probably do want to go join Michelle and Diana. I love that. I'm so thrilled to be doing it with my dear Diana. And I'm telling you, I, we just, we have so many things, exciting things planned for, for everyone who comes, but our commitment is that you leave with more of your own story that you can share right. your bag of wisdom with others and make a difference. That's and it's, really what our focus is. We, we talk about stories all the time. I mean, stories right. are what motivate everyone. I mean, my story is what motivates me to do what I do next. Your story is motivated. We all have stories. It's a matter of digging them out That's and right. figuring out what they are. Michelle, you are awesome. I want to make sure that people know how to follow you. In addition to your website, they can follow you at Michelle Gabriel on LinkedIn. They can also follow you on Instagram at michelle.gabriel. And of course, we already mentioned your website and the program that you will be doing. Any last minute thoughts you want to share with our audience about stories, about living your best life, about the peak stage? Uh -huh. Well, I think I, I would just like to share my one of my favorite quotes. Please. And it's from a book called Crow and Weasel by Barry Lopez. And it goes something like this. When stories come to you, care for them and give them away when they're needed. Sometimes people need stories more than food to stay alive. That is how we take care of one another. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Michelle, thank you for thank spending you. time with us today. Thank you, Karen. We want to thank our audience for spending time with us. We know you have a choice as to where you spend your time. You chose to spend it with Michelle and I today. We are eternally grateful for that. Go out and give somebody an awesome day. And we'll see you next time on the next Peak Stage. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>